Chapter 40. I open my eyes. Blurred faces look down at me. Reva, how are you feeling? Asked the camp doctor. How are you feeling? She touches me gently. My hand. It hurts. I am so thirsty. I know, child. She moistens my lips with water. We have to take you back to the hospital in Glatz. The doctor there wants to see you. But I just came back. I am so tired. It takes so much effort to speak. You came back several days ago. She wipes my forehead with a wet cloth. It feels good. I want to sleep, please. No, dear girl, we must get you dressed. We have to leave soon. I am going with you. Lada asked me to go to help you walk. She told me how you staggered all the way home. I hear tears in her voice. Is she crying for me? Am I dying? The doctor holds me up as we walk through the beautiful mountainside. The cold air feels refreshing on my hot face. The guard walks in front of us, stopping each time we lag behind. She waits silently for us to catch up with her. We reach the station as if in a dream, a dream I've lived through before. I stand in the corner of the train. My head rests heavily on the doctor's arm. She caresses my head and holds onto the wall to keep us both from falling. The guard sits on the bench, watching us. She turns her face toward the window. We reach Glatz. The camp doctor and I step into the gutter. I look at her with feverish eyes. She walks proudly, holding her head high, hugging me close to her. My eyes rest on the number and the yellow star on her coat. I feel a huge lump in my throat. Doctor, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you have to march like this in the gutter with them staring at us. I'm sorry you have to suffer this humiliation because of me. You are such a special person. Reva, she says, lifting my chin high. We are all special. Hold your head proudly. Those who put us in the gutter feel shame. Not us. She presses my hand warmly. We are special, Reva. We are better. We can still feel. We reach the hospital. It is still early in the morning. The doctor, I remember, bending over me is waiting for us. She ushers us into an examination room. I sit down. The camp doctor and guard stand by my side. How is she doing? The doctor asks the guard. She is still running a high fever, doctor. The camp doctor speaks up. The doctor looks at her silently, then at the guard. Forgive me. This is the camp doctor. I asked her to come to help the girl. Good. Very good. She pauses, looking at the young woman in an old coat marked with a yellow star and a number. How is she doing, doctor? She's in a lot of pain, doctor. Their eyes meet silently. The doctor cuts the bandage. I watch her face, holding my breath. The gauze is sticking to the wound. I bit my lips. She is a very brave girl, sitting so still. This is very painful. The doctor speaks to the camp doctor and the guard as if I were not there. She speaks German. The last piece of dressing is off. The guard turns her face away. I watch the doctor's eyes. They are full of distress. Oh my, we still have a problem, she turns to the camp doctor. I'll clean it out and put fresh dressing on it. The poison is still spreading up her hand, she sighs. Well, wait a few more days, then bring her back. She stops, taking a deep breath. If it does not improve, I will have to amputate her arm. Oh God, the camp doctor cries out. I feel the chair sliding out from under me. I gasp for air, my eyes close. Reva, Reva, open your eyes. The camp doctor holds something under my nose. It smells strong. Come on, child, don't faint. I open my eyes slowly, looking straight into the, ho- the doctor's horror-stricken face. I am sorry. I did not know she understood German. Tears flow silently down my face. She wipes them gently. We march back to the train. The sun is strong, but I only feel darkness around me. Doctor, I find it hard to speak. Doctor, you must make me a promise. She looks at me. You must promise if the infection is not better, you will not let them amputate. I stop. They will not need me with one arm. I'll die either way. Please don't let them cut off my arm. Promise. She pulls me closer to her. Doctor, when they put me to sleep, I will be helpless. I do not want to wake up with one arm. You must promise you will not let her do it. Please, promise. Reva, the surgery may save your life, she says meekly. You know it will not save me. Let me die of the poisoning. I see the pain in her face. I promise, she says. I promise.